Welcome to Silicon Valley Asian Business Talk. This is Roger Chen from University of San Francisco. In this video program, we interview business leaders, entrepreneurs, and the leading experts from San Francisco, Silicon Valley, Asia, and beyond. This program is sponsored by University of San Francisco Center for Business Studies and Innovation in Asia Pacific. Maybe relating to uh, this, um, about the my next question relating to, because I'm a strategy scholar, so competition innovation is a natural topic. So um, could you kind of just elaborate a little bit about, because I know every startup company typically start with a very risky innovation. They try to offer something very unique or haven't been seen in the market. So here's the question, actually, when you run your company, uh, after you find, let's say, your first uh, like a product market fit, you got your main business, main product. So what's your philosophy? More importantly, what's your practice in dealing with uh, or continuously searching for so-called radical innovation? Radical innovation basically means very new products mm-hmm. or very new features that could typically risky, but potentially has very high return. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what's your practice in dealing with that type of, uh, you know, innovation versus conservative, incrementally improving your features, yeah. things like that? What, what's your kind of wisdom on that? Sure. Uh, you know, it's a um, very well articulated question. And um, I'm glad you qualified that as, you know, talking about the radically new uh, innovation, um, you know, I might use the word category creation companies, yeah, like new yeah. category companies. And um, especially as Asian entrepreneurs, uh, we have the benefit of looking at established categories and uh, adapting that to our local markets, uh, something that has worked in the US. Let's uh, do it in uh, our local market. And uh, you, you're sort of borrowing the product market fit as an established category. and you are creating a regional category or you're taking a piece of software, which uh, is an established category and you're doing it cheaper. You know, you're doing a good enough thing at, at a significantly lower cost and great successful businesses have been built that way where you're harnessing the talent and manpower and that advantage and using that to really build a great world-class product uh, at, at a much more different price point. Um, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about the uh, new category uh, products. And sort of by definition, the new category products do not have a direct competition. There is no clear yeah. uh, product alternative. So to, to borrow Michael Moore's uh, product alternative and market alternative, what ends up happening is while you're navigating the product market fit journey, um, you end up getting really user obsessed. Uh, and in that journey, the big changes are, oh, I, I thought this was the user, but actually that is the user. Or mm-hmm. I thought these were the users, but now I've realized that these two other stakeholders are also important for this product, for it to win. You know, those are the nature of insights that you learn. And once you build it in a very user-centric way, there is such a blue ocean you know, there is no clear alternative because that's how users are engaging with you because there's nothing out there that solves it. Um, so, and you end up automatically focusing on the unsolved part and not on the solved part. Um, but once you are getting to product market fit and beyond, you then you start in, in taking it mainstream, something emerges as competition where mm, yeah. the users say, oh, but I'm using that or, or doesn't that solve the problem? Or um, how does it compare to that? You know, because larger companies in their buying process actually want a comparison point or uh, even consumers, if, if they're buying something expensive, um, then they they want a comparison point, you know, to, to justify their uh, purchase. People find new things as risky. Um, you know, customers find anything new as risky and to reduce risk, they need a comparable. So, 
yeah. think that's when you are forced to start looking at competition. And um, there, I think the sort of biggest uh, learning I've got from my advisors and mentors, and I found that to be very effective is, um, you know, it's very easy to get distracted by competition. And the more you look at competition, there is an innate need to follow that and copy that or to neutralize that. So either you're trying to one up or you're trying to neutralize. Um, and in both cases, you end up following them. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that becomes a distraction because that comes at the cost of building something that the users really want, right? That competition might not even have seen. So um, the way I, I, so the simple way to put this is focus on the customers. Don't worry about the competition. Um, if you're obsessed about the customer, they'll take you to the right place. You won't have to care about competition. A more nuanced way to say it is see the competition through your customer's eyes. Mm, that's interesting. So you, you focus on the customer. Don't take your eye off the customer. And be aware of what the competitor means to your customer uh, so that you, know, you end up winning uh, against that. But the eyes are always on the customer. Yeah, that's a very interesting way. Even you look at the competition, you choose the lenses, which is the you or customers' lenses to look at the competition. That's very insightful, right? You know, because you can look at a competition from different ways. Uh, but I think that's very, very interesting.